welcome to Elida High School, where we have on the Union Bank court tonight the Division Three District Semifinal Matchup. We have the Alanis Mustangs here to play the Delphus Jefferson Lady Cats. My name is Mark Schein. My pleasure to do play-by-play -play alongside Evan Skilleter to do our color commentary for us this evening. Uh, Aaron, let's, Evan, let's talk about uh, Alan East first. Aaron Montgomery's team comes in 17 and 6, 4 and 4. They lost to, to Jefferson by three points way back two months ago. Uh, how do you view this team think, coming in from Alan East? Alan East is a fantastic team that has a, a bunch of different scores. You look at players like L. Richardson, six points a game. Ryland Jones, sophomore guard, second team NWC, 12 and a half points per game this season. Also turns in four rebounds, three assists. And then Savannah Brooks, a junior, first team NWC. 15 points a game. Kennedy Truex, 8.1. I mean, these are this is a team that can score from all over the place. They can have all different types of uh, ways to score as well, excuse me. So I really like what Alan East does. I like Aaron Montgomery's system. He's a, a guy that doesn't allow his team to take bad shots. They've bought into that system. They'll run through their sets. They'll possess the ball. And again, just a lot of really good leadership on that squad. One of the things I thought was interesting, we got coaching keys from, from each of the two coaches this evening. And a lot of teams look at Jefferson and say, we have to control the pace of the game, not Coach Montgomery. We're going to run and score in transition with them. Yeah, absolutely. Now, here's the thing that, that gives Alan East trouble, it's size. And Jefferson, they've got some good size. You look at Lauren French, a big block the other night, 6'3", junior, plays great defense. They want to get out ahead of her so she can't get down underneath the basket and block shots. Alan East likes to get to the basket and she'll cause a lot of problems. Hannah Wiltsey's a great defender as well on the perimeter. So if Alan East has to get into those sets, we said they like to run through them. But Delphus Jefferson's a team that can defend really, really well. And so certainly getting out in transition and scoring before that defense is set could be a key for Alan East. Let's go through our starting lineups this evening for the Alan East Mustangs. They are 17 and 6. They end at 4 and 4 in the Northwest Conference. Number 5 is Kennedy Truex. Kennedy is a senior averaging 8.1 points per game. Uh, number 10 is Savannah Brooks. And Savannah averages 15 points a game. She is a junior. Ryland Jones is a sophomore. She averages 12 and a half points per game. She wears number 12. Number 14 is Aubrey Young. Aubrey is a junior averaging a couple points a game. And L. Richardson, the other uh, senior in the starting lap tonight, wears number 24. She averages six a game and four and a half rebounds. For Delphus Jefferson, uh, Denise Lindemann's team, they are 22-1. They were 8-0 in champions of the Northwest Conference. They will go with Hannah Wiltsey, 5'8 senior, 9 points a game. Number 10 is uh, Gwen Truitt, Tiemann. She is a 5'7 senior at 3 points a game. Liv Lindemann wears number 15. She was co-player of the year in the Northwest Conference this year. 5'7 junior, 19.9 points per game, 6 boards, 4 assists. Number 30, Jessa Rostifer. She is a 5'5 senior at 3.6. And number 42 is Lauren French, second team all-conference player. She's a 6'3 junior, averaging eight points and nine and a half rebounds per game this evening. But I guess go back on, back, way back, Evan, back on uh, December 15th. Jefferson won this game by three. That's a long time ago. That's not going to have much play in this game tonight. No, it never does, especially in tournament time. All cards are out there and all bets are off. This is uh, a great atmosphere here at Elida. Both teams, great support, and I really love both these coaches. We already talked about Aaron yep. Montgomery, but Denise Lindemann, you talk about a, a coach that's able to get her whole team to buy in. Denise does such a fantastic job. This, her teams have always run the offenses. They've been really good at executing. Uh, she's she's a ga great game planner as well, Mark. And so we're looking at some uh, really good basketball here tonight. The winner will come back on a Saturday afternoon. They will play the winner of our second game coming up this evening, the Ottawa Glendale Titans and the Fairview Apaches. We will have the opening tip coming up here from Elida. Right after this, you're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. We're back at the United Fieldhouse, the Union Bank Court, where tonight's scoreboard is presented by Stites Grocery. Stop in the Stites on Harding Highway in Lima for your discount groceries, meat packs, gear processing, full-service meat, and deli. Have a large event. Sites also caters. Call, give us a call. Starting lineups, our officials are here tonight. A.J. Kramer, Ben Kramer, Stephen McCrary. Stephen will toss the basketball, and we're underway. Division three, district semifinal. Ball tipped into the backcourt to the Alan East Mustangs, and they put the ball immediately into the hands of Ryland Jones. This is Savannah Brooks with the basketball now. And she hands basketball back to Albert Young. Here's a shot that will go up, and it's tracked down in the corner by Rustopher, and this is Liv Lindemann. And that pass sails out of bounds on some miscommunications. 
See the early shot from Allen East from the mid-range. They're going to have to hit from outside. If they're going to get into that, those half-court sets, they're going to have to hit from outside to make sure that they can force Delphus Jefferson out and create some space inside. Again, Lauren French, 6'3", junior, fantastic defender at the rim. They want to keep her away from the rim as much as possible. Just bounce pass, baseline, jump shot will go up. That was missed. That was tracked down. The shot was missed that time by Kennedy uh, Truax. And even right there, yeah. French didn't block the shot, but she was able to alter it and create that miss. And Wilson caught the ball in the wing, had the ball knocked out of bounds by Ryland Jones. And it will be triggered in bounds by Jessa Rustifer. Lindemann, co-player of the year in the Northwest Conference. She and Kelly Gregory from Crestview shared that honor. And both will be back next year. I was year. going to say both shooters, aren't they? Yep. Ball ends up into the hands of Truex. And then the pass goes inside, and French gets the first basket of the game. Lauren French. It was a good pass over the top. Allen East mm. really doesn't have the size to match with French, and so if she can catch it, it's going to be tough to defend. Straight line drive to the goal, and she overshot the basketball, but the rebound comes inside. This is Truex working. Her shot's blocked inside. Here's Lindemann pushing it the other way. Lindemann gets knocked off the ball, and we'll have our first foul of the basketball game. And we'll go to Aubrey Young, and we get our first couple of subs into the game for Jefferson, number 22, Ryder Marcus. And number 20, that would be Kirsten Moore. So a couple of early subs in the game, less than two minutes into this one. Especially important if they think that Alan East is going to push the pace. Yeah, Liv Lindemann on a reverse layup on the inbounds play, and she will chalk up a basket ahead to the free throw line. Our free throws tonight are sponsored by Lee's Famous Rescue Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Nice reverse layup right it there was. from Lindemann. The foul went to, and Lindemann makes the free throw. Lindemann yeah. averaged just 0.1 points shy of 20 this season. We'll round up and say a 20 point per game scorer. Fantastic perimeter defender as well. Works really, really tough. That three balls blocked that time. Handling the ball by Marcus. Trying to get open as Jones comes off a screen, works inside. And Lindemann impedes her progress, and then she lost it out of bounds. Timeout. This timeout's going to go to Aaron Montgomery. He wants to settle his team down. We're two minutes and 10 seconds into this. Jefferson by five. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back at Elida uh, High School. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, Lima, Wapak, and Delphus are our free throw sponsors tonight. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. The two fouls have gone against uh, Savannah Brooks, and the other one went against Arbor Young. So we finally got that one up on the board, so we can kind of update you on that. And Montgomery takes our first time out of the basketball game as well. Shot missed. French was battling for the rebound. Couldn't secure it, however. Ends up in the hands of Aubrey Young. Lindemann went through the entire defense on her way to the basket. Overshot and the rebound. Basket will go. Ba basket goes to Young. Aubrey Young with her first points and the points of her first for her team. Here's a little pressure. Lindemann picked the ball up and her coach has to call timeout. A trapped in the corner, Evan. Nowhere to throw it to. Kind of surprised him with that. Yeah, I wonder if Mo Coach Montgomery at the timeout said, if we score, we're going to press. Got them right into the corner, and I don't think that Delphus Jefferson was fully prepared for that because they had a bunch of girls running down the court, but mm -hmm. no one coming to relieve the pressure. So nice job by the Mustangs forcing that timeout. And a good basket right there. We talked about how French will come off and help right there. If French does turn around and she was guarding you, you have to crash the boards because on those second opportunities, normally she's going to be out of position, and that's exactly what happened right there as Aubrey Young grabbed the rebound and put it back. Spalding Millwright Services is proud to support the Allen East Mustangs. The team at SMS offers quality products from fabrication to installation located on Hanthorn Road and online at Spallinger.com. Each team has called a timeout. Now they go through the press rather easily. Here's a lot pass inside. French with the catch in the basket. That's exactly how it's done. Mm -hmm. That ball did not hit the ground one time on its way 
down to the rim. Right on Marquis had the assist. Front big body inside, catch and score. It's a high screen. This three ball is going to go up from Young. That bounces around. The rebound by Marquis. Here comes Lindemann. Mustang still trying to hit from outside to create some space in. Defensive pressure from the black shirted Mustangs. Passes side, was knocked out of bounds. Tried to get the French, got tipped out of bounds. Here comes Jessel Rostopher back in the game. There's a good rotation right there from Elle Richardson. She came from the top down because her team kind of got out of position as the ball went to the corner. So she came down to cut off that pass to French. If she wouldn't have, it would have been another easy layup for Delphus Jefferson. There's a lob pass inside to French on the out of bounds play. Lindemann goes to the goal, catches, and, and a held ball situation that will stay with Jefferson. Rostifer is the inbounder. They're going to lob it out to French. There's a deep three that will go up from Kirsten Moore. French rebounds that one. She's got her fifth and six points. Yeah, and again, just too much size underneath right now for Allen East as they're not able to match Lauren French. Great rebound. I like that she kept the ball up in the air exactly how you're taught. Good wall up defense inside. This shot's going to go up. That one goes. It's just a two. Aubrey Young has all four points for the Mustangs early on. This three is going to go up at the other end. That three ball, that goes for Rostifer. Just a two. Thank you. Her first basket of the game. Nice. Push on that baseline angle here. It's kind of tough to see whether they're out behind the arc or not. Here's another three. That one's going to go up. And that one is a three. Deep three for Savannah Brooks, her 43rd of the year. Brooks is a great three-point shooter, 35% from outside right there. Nice job stepping in and putting it up. And we're going to get a held ball at this end. Yeah, I think it'll be Mustang's turn with the ball. Wildcats really need to keep it out of the corner. They keep yeah. inbounding right to that spot where there's no relief. And the Mustangs have done a really nice job not just trapping but not fouling as well. Brooks will be the inbounder. The team trails by four. Savannah Brooks into the lane. Bounce pass will go across the lane. This jump shot's going to go up from L. Richardson. A sub into the game. That's Taylor Nichols. She wears number 50 for Allen East. Rostiver thought about pulling the trigger. Instead goes into the lane. And it goes cross court. And the pass is not ended up in Wilkes' hand. But she couldn't finish. Here comes the Mustangs. With French on the bench, this is where they need to take advantage by getting to the basket and getting some good high percentage looks. Kirsten Moore knocked it out of bounds. French back in the game. That was a short break, wasn't it? It was indeed. Just enough to get a drink, catch your breath. They need that post presence for sure. Sometimes you get all that emotion, adrenaline going early, and you need a break like that. She came to the bench and actually asked to come out, and obviously was not over there very long. Jones, 17-footer, and tipped out of bounds by Wiltsy. So that's, that's good news for Allen East. Not that the shot got blocked, but what happened right there, Jones came off the screen. French was there to challenge. Now if Jones, next time down. Richardson couldn't finish on the inbounds play. If Jones next time recognizes that French is away, she can drop off the ball underneath for an easy look. That's a two. That one will go to Ryan Marquis. Two for her, 13-7. Richardson gets it stolen. This will be Wilkes. He headed the other way. And we're going to get a foul before she could get to the rim as L. Richardson got back to contest the shot. Or is it on the floor? Not sure. Either way, it's a great job by Richardson getting back and making a play on the ball. Sometimes you see people just shove from behind. Right there, she was able to get to a position where she could reach in for the ball. It's still a foul, but she stopped an easy layup from happening. Here's Dylan Miller, wears number 20 for Allen East into the basketball game. It was an on-the-floor type foul situation. Good save then by Richardson. Here's the pass inside to French and then the kick out. Repost. Marquis tries to go baseline. He can't get there. Good defense. This will be a three. 
That time, Jesse Rostefer nailed the three ball, her 20th of the season. Cats are shooting really, really great right now. They're getting good looks for moving the ball around as well. This three is going to go up, and that three will be splashed in by Ryland Jones. Talked about Ryland in the pregame, second team NWC player. This year, 12.5 points per game, hits 30% of her threes this season. 16-10 favor the Jefferson Lady Cats, and scrambling for the basketball, Nichols has it, finds a teammate. This will be Jones headed the other way. Good crowd tonight, Evan. Absolutely, love the atmosphere. Foul line jump shot, French with another rebound. Another nice challenge mm -hmm. off the screen. It's one of the things you got to do is get back on Lindemann because she loves to go to the glass. And a three splashed out of the corner. Lana Marquis, seen her do that a lot in their championship game over Lipsick. She had four of those. Pushed her team up to a nine point lead in this game. Cats are just shooting so well. And right yeah. there, Lindemann did a nice job getting inside and forcing that defender to come in and help. This will be a two that will go for Aubrey Young. She's got six in the opening quarter. Audrey keeping her team into this one. French left alone inside against the pressure and muscles up again. Eight for her in the opening quarter. I think the Mustangs might have to come out of that yeah. press. If it's going to be broken that easily, they're finding French underneath. She just she just rim runs against the press that gets down and gets set up and they're able to find her inside for easy ones. Exactly. Nine point lead. Tough defense on the perimeter from the Cats. We said it. If Alan East is forced into offensive sets, it's going to be tough, but there's yeah. a good look. Brooks with a jump shot from the foul line area. Points four and five for her. A lot of points on the board for the two teams in the opening quarter. Now Jefferson will play last shot of this opening quarter. He's going to get a high ball screen. And then goes off glass, but a little bit strong, and the quarter will come to an end. 35 points on the board in the opening quarter. 21 belong to the Jefferson Lady Cats. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back at Elida. Our scoreboard tonight is sponsored by Stites on Harding Highway in Lima. All of your discount groceries, meat packs, beer processing, full service meat in Delhi. Have a large event. Stites also caters and give them a call. 21-14 Jefferson. They'll be their basketball as we start quarter number two. The winner will get Ottawa Glandorf or Fairview. And you told me you've had that game a lot recently, huh? Yeah, the last three years. So this will be year number four that I've had it. And looking forward to seeing those two go at it. Two familiar foes. Lindemann gets loose and goes to the goal. Left-handed and shoots the ball up right-handed and scores. She's got five points now. Lead goes to nine. She's doing a great job getting to the rim. If you're Alan East, you cannot allow her to break through that front line, the perimeter defenders. Rylan Jones was trying to get to the rim. She was fouled before she could get there. Looks like the foul go Kirsten Moore. First foul against Jefferson. They made it through the whole opening eight minutes without picking up a foul. Here's Taylor Nichols back into the game. Right now, Jefferson's doing a really nice job funneling everything down to the basket and defending the rim really well. We've seen a lot of Alanis points come from mid-range jumpers, and I think Jefferson is fine with giving up those mid-range jumpers. What they want to do is make sure they're not giving up open threes and open looks at the rim. Pass inside Savannah Brooks. She wanted to go turn around jump shot. Too much pressure. This is Jones. And Nichols. Jefferson defense has been pretty good here, giving up 14 in the opening quarter. L. Richardson, here's a bounce pass inside, and French tipped it away. Nichols gets it back. There's a long three that'll go up, and French rebounds. Lindemann throws the ball into the corner. This is Moore, and now French. It's going to be a two. And who hit it out of bounds? It looks like it went off the hands of Kirsten Moore. Talked about one of the keys to the game from Coach Montgomery was to push the pace and, and get some transition buckets. Well, right now, we haven't seen them been able to do that because either Delphus Jefferson is doing a nice job hitting their shots or when they get possession, it's an out-of-bounds play like this or something where they're just not able to push that tempo at all. So they really haven't been able to have, or they really haven't had any opportunities to get into that game plan of, of pushing the tempo. 
Alanis put number 20, uh, 22 in the basketball game. Bryn Richardson, she is a freshman. She's currently in the high post area right now. That's a shot that's blocked. Long field goal attempt by Brooks was knocked down. Here we're going the other way. French. Here's a three that's going to go up. Short, but getting her own rebound that time was Wiltsey. Here's another three. That one will go as Gwen Tiemann likes to land. Such a great job shooting from outside. It seems like one miss is followed by two makes. They have, go ahead, Aaron. Out to a big lead, 12 points. Yeah, they have made the three three-point field goals in the opening part of the basketball game. We're just 10 minutes into this. We're going the other way. Lindemann. And her shot is a little bit strong. It's rebound by Richardson. She wanted to throw it ahead. There it goes. Headed baseline, Kennedy Truex has to give it back up. Great perimeter defense from French right there, cutting off the baseline. And not right there. That was a nice move to the goal that time. Kennedy Truex gets to the glass as she went around Lauren French. Really good ball fake and go. Because you're right, she had to play really good defense and then she got loose. Yeah. Absolutely, and that's what you have to do. If you pull her away from the basket, try to beat her. Block shot inside. The shot attempt was taken by Tiemann. Here comes Alanis the other way. Richardson from 17 feet. Missed it. And who hit it out of bounds? Looks like it's going to go. Which way? Stays with Alan East. But again, that mid-range jumper, uh, you could tell right there, Lindemann was okay giving that up. She sagged back. She just didn't want to give up the baseline. She didn't want to give up an easy lane to the basket. So they're settling for, de defensively, Delphus Jefferson settling for those mid-range jumpers or allowing them, uh, the Mustangs, some space to shoot that mid-range. With patient possession this time, looking at the zone for the first time. Not, not a zone, but actually kind of follow the cutters through. French matched up out front with a guard that time and tipped the ball away. That was a good job by Lauren. She's doing so well. We talked about the perimeter defense just a second ago. Doing a great job playing some passing lanes up top and obviously a great rim protector as well. She is an asset on off or defense, excuse me. There's no admission fee to watch this game, but there is a cost for TV44 to broadcast it too. Say thanks to viewers supported TV44 by sending them a financial gift right now. That shot misses. Rebound comes to Lindemann. TV44 relies on donations to the airing program just like this. And you can go to WTLW.com and put, click the donate button. Marquis with a three-pointer. Missed. Rebound. Baseline. Savannah Brooks. She finds Ryland Jones. He wanted to pull the trigger. Could. It's a good closeout by the lengthy Hannah mm. Wiltsey. A couple of screens at the high post area. Wiltsey, it's not Wiltsey, excuse me, but moving to the goal. And then every part of the rim wouldn't go for Kennedy Truex. Who got the foul? French picked up her first foul, second team foul. Just five total fouls in the basketball game. Kennedy Truex to the free throw line. Good job by Truex getting around French that time and then stopping just short in order to get that contact. She makes the first of the two Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throws. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, Lima, Wapak, and Delphus call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Truex second free throw. She's got the lead back down to eight. She now has six points. She has all of the Mustang points here in the quarter number two. This will be a three ball that will go up for more. That Miss Long Lindemann tracks the ball down in the corner. It's a good hustle play. We're going to get a foul out of it. Yeah, it looked like 14. Yep. That's Aubrey Young came down on the arm of Lindemann as she was grabbing that ball. It looked clean with one hand, but the other hand certainly came across that arm. And from our man, it looked like a pretty good foul from our is a good sure. call. She becomes the first player in the game, does uh, Aubrey Young, to have two fouls.
Je Jefferson. Half court, that pass is going to go awry. A little miscommunication between Marquis and Rustifer. One of the few turnovers for oh, yeah. Delphus Jefferson so far tonight. They've done a really nice job making solid passes, moving the ball around the perimeter, penetrating, pitching, finding some open looks. We'll have some halftime stat numbers for you, and obviously some to wrap up the game tonight as well. Jefferson's lead, which was 12, is now 8. Jones gets into the lane, has to bounce pass it back out. Shot into the lane, and good track down by Richardson. Pass down inside, and going off last with a pretty move is Kennedy Truex. All eight of her points are in this quarter, and she has all the Mustang points in this quarter. You see, as soon as French goes to the bench, they start to go inside, post up, trying to get those high percentage looks. It's a really nice job, but guess who's over at the yeah, scores table the ready scores to come back? Yep. Three ball will go up from Wiltsey. Nice, re strong rebound inside, and will go the other way. Ryland Jones trying to get to the rim, spins in the lane, and will draw contact. Cats have gone cold from outside, and in the meantime, Alanis has done a nice job attacking the rim. Hannah Wiltsey gets the foul call, and we'll get a couple of Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws right here by Ryland Jones. Four points for her in the game. Here's French back in the game. That one's a little long, but Richardson gets the rebound from the second spot. Really good hustle from Richardson to win another possession back. There's a ball fake and go to the glass. As good as a golf draw a foul with Kennedy Truex. It'll be two on Lauren French. Nice job this quarter. Allen East attacking her, drawing some contact. If they can get her into foul trouble, we've already seen what they can do with her on the bench. See what happens. Kennedy Truex free throw is a little bit long. She made a pair just a moment ago. And what are we going to get? We're going to get a Denise Lindemann timeout. 2.33 to go. Jefferson takes her second timeout. You're watching high school basketball on WSN. Our premier sponsor today is Spaller and Millwright Services, proud to support the Allen East Mustang. The team at SMS offers quality products from fabrication to installation, located on Hanthorn Road and online at Spallinger.com. Denise Lindemann takes her second time out. Her lead has shrunk to just five, pending this free throw coming up right here. Could be four, as Kennedy Truex has eight points in the quarter. French rebounds. French is staying out there with those two fouls. I'd be shocked if the Mustangs don't attack her next time down the floor. Lindemann goes right to the glass. Her scoop shot doesn't go, but she will get to go to the free throw line. A couple of Lee's famous rescue chicken free throws. That foul went to Savannah Brooks becomes the second. Allen East Mustang with two fouls. Lindemann has five points in the game. She made a free throw earlier. She's a 76% free throw shooter on the season. There's a great attack as well. Good footwork, little Euro step right to left to get around the defender. Both teams have gotten a little cold from the free throw line uh, here in quarter number two. That one stuck in the corner. Six points for her. That's what the lead is right now. Ryland Jones goes to the rim, gets cut off by two different players, and the pass is a little bit went into the hands of Truex, but she couldn't finish. Lindemann's going to push the other way. This is Wiltsy trying to get to the rim. Now there's French. More good penetration yeah. and sending it outside for open looks. Now the Cats trying to slow things down a little bit, maybe a directive from that last timeout by Coach Lindemann trying to get some better looks than they've had in the last few possessions. Tiemann had a look at three right there and turned it down. It doubled up French inside right there. And now Tiemann's got a look. A little bit long, and L. Richardson tracks it down. Very active player is L. Here's Ryland Jones. Tricks. Rebound Lindemann. 
Maybe rushed that one a little bit, kind of made that decision later after she got the ball, wasn't quite in position to shoot. Sent it up really flat. Again, I think they need to attack French a little bit. Even if you get a shot blocked, at least try to get contact. Limited shots blocked inside by Kennedy Truex. Approaching a minute to go, second quarter. This is a three that's going to go up. Nope. Lindemann again. That was interesting. The last time Lindemann got the rebound, somebody on the bench yelled, go. That time, as soon as she got the rebound, two coaches yelled, stop. <laughs> right. So exactly. they're going to play last shot here of the, of the quarter. It's a six-point quarter for Alan East. That's where their lead is right now. And Lindemann has a six in the game. She's matched up currently out front with Dylan Miller. And we're going to run this one down. Tell the Mustangs trying to clog up the lane right now. Lindemann with space could very easily go one on one and create a good look for himself. Probably want to go with around 12 seconds on the clock. That gives you a chance for an offensive rebound. Let's see what the set is. Will she get a high ball screen? French is starting to edge that way. Nope, it's going to be uh, team that will set the high ball screen. Right there. Lindemann bounced past across the lane, but she was fouled. It will be just a 16 foul, so we'll take this one out of bounds. Yeah, not the worst foul right there. I don't know if it was intentional, but there was going to be a really nice look for French underneath as Lindemann drew a couple defenders. They did not put the foul on the board. I, I did not see. We'll see if we can catch up with that. Either way, it's going to be 5.2 seconds left to get a shot opportunity. Here's French inside. Quick shot off glass. It rolls around and won't fall. Jefferson rebounds, and quarter number two will come to an end. Jefferson got themselves back in the game. I think the half number two, they will be, to be down by six. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back in the line of high school, the Union Bank Court here at the Elida Fieldhouse. The scoreboard has been sponsored by Stites Grocery. Stop in the Stites on Harding Highway in Lima for your discount groceries, meat packs, gear processing, full service meats, and deli. Have a large event. Stites also caters. You can give them a call at Stites. Mark Shine, Evan Skilliger. Evan, we're a minute away from the second half action begins. It was a 7-6 quarter that time for Alan East, and they kind of got back into it, kind of mellowed out towards the end of the quarter for both teams. Couldn't score many points, but it's a six-point game. Yeah, I thought in the middle of the second quarter, Alan East started to do a nice job attacking. They actually got Lauren French to the vent for two fouls. And I thought they'd keep uh, attacking and trying to get that third foul or keep doing what was working, which again was getting past the defenders and getting up and getting some good looks. Instead, they kind of settled into a, more of the deep three slash mid-range jumper situation that they had going in the first quarter, and they didn't really close that gap all the way. So I, I want to see them attack a little more here in the second half. They're not shooting very well, but again, I think that shooting percentage doesn't necessarily have to go up right away as long as they're driving and maybe getting some contact and some fouls inside. Very balanced scoring for the Mustangs. Six for Kennedy Truex, six for Aubrey Young, five for Savannah Brooks, and a four for Ryland Jones. Four players have scored. Very balanced there on the other side. Pretty balanced too. Lauren French had eight all in the opening quarter. Six for Liv Lindemann, five apiece for Marquis and Rustifer. So pretty balanced scoring for both teams. Nobody really can foul trouble, and both teams just come out and play in the second half. Yeah, and you mentioned the eight points all in the first quarter for French. A lot of those came from Deltas Jefferson breaking the Alanese press and getting those easy looks at the rim. The Mustangs have done a, a nice job, or a much better job, of running that press, or at least dropping back and making sure there are no easy looks. But one other thing to watch for, we keep talking about it, Alanese really wants to push the tempo, and they haven't been able to do that yet. Alanese basketball in the black uniform. Delphus Jefferson's in the white with a red trim tonight. And they get the basketball first, and lost basketball on top. Rostover comes up with it. Here's Lindemann, and that's tipped away from behind. Jones gets it right back. Not many turnovers in the opening half, and we, each team gets one in the first 30 seconds. That ball bounces around and will not go for Jones. French rebounds. Alan East had three turnovers in the first half. Delphus Jefferson with four. Like you said, not too many. They've done a nice job taking care of the basketball. Wiltsy on the wing. She's going to penetrate dribble. This is Teeman. She gets a screen and heads to the rim, gets cut off. Got away with one right there, that back foot. Slid, but both referees had their vision blocked. Can't see everything. Rostifer. 
Patient possession. We're a minute into the second half. Nobody's got a shot up yet. Lindemann resets things. Jefferson got here with a one-point win over Coldwater, and that three ball goes Gwen Tiemann. She's got a pair of those in the game for her six points. It's a nice shot right there. Overall, three for ten in the first half for the Wildcats from outside. One for one's going to get it done here early on in the half. Lead that was six is now nine, and Tiemann's going to pick up her first foul in the basketball game. Had a chance to watch the fourth quarter of the Dolphins Jefferson Coldwater game that was played here earlier this week. Coldwater came up short by a point. Flory at the end of the game, French blocked the shot by Riley Rissmiller. And Lindemann made one free throw to make it a 31 30 game. Alanis got here by getting a seven point victory over Wayne Trace in their sectional final game. Push shot out of the corner. That one will splash. That was a young who started the game off and scoring the six points in the opening quarter. Had not scored since then. She's got eight now. Teamman gets another look at three. That rebounds to French, and French goes up through traffic and scores. She's the first double figure scorer in the game. Yeah, right there, just not a good enough job turning around and boxing her out. Savannah Brooks was there for the rebound, but with French being taller and that close to the basket, she was able to just grab it and put it back in. You got to get a body into her and push her away. Lead goes back to nine. Jones pushes a three up. Rylan Jones has her second three of the night and her fifth, sixth, and seventh point. Mustangs were two of seven from three in that first half. There's Teeman going to the rim and goes off glass and scores. Did I read in the score sheet? Gwen Teeman averages three a game. She's got eight already. Yeah, she's done a really nice job attacking. She made a couple big shots from the mid-range as well so far tonight. Jones wants to push out it again. Lindemann's on in guarding position on her. Truex tried to get to the rim. L. Richardson gets a rebound. Jones going to go scoop shot a little hard, and French just snatches the rebound around. Here's a three that's going to go up, and that one goes. Ryder Marquis, she's got her second three of the night. She's got eight points. And all of a sudden, we're back to 11. Wildcats finding gold from that corner right in front of us. Mark, they've done a nice job pushing the tempo themselves and getting some open looks outside. French gets that rebound. We're headed the other way. There's a long pass head to Tiemann. She waits for the defenders, goes by, and she scores. She's got 10. And we're going to get a timeout. Allen East, it's a 13-point Jefferson lead. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Our free throws tonight are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak and Delphas. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. You had a conflict. You couldn't make the sh selection show, could you? I you could not. I could sponsored not. Sponsored by and catered by Lee's Chicken, That's my right. man. I was, I was uh, definitely jealous watching the show and seeing the bucket of chicken <laughs> on the table. And you know how difficult it is to talk high school hoop with your mouth full of chicken? I feel like it's a lot easier, right? The creative juices get flowing. Uh, that was uh, a really nice you. show. That was a great show that we put together. We appreciate them for sponsoring that that evening. Right now, you were saying Lauren French has got some numbers. Yeah, she does. Ten points, ten rebounds already in this game. She had eight in the first half, two quickly here in the second half. And like you said, eight points in the first quarter for French. And here with two with that double-double, 10 and 10. Alanis cut the lead down to about six a while back in the second quarter. Let's see if they can do something again. Jones gets inside and French blocks the shot. Nichols rebounds. And going off glass and finishing inside will be is that Savannah Brooks. I was trying to catch a number. I guess it was, wasn't it? Savannah it was. Brooks got seven points. That bucket made possible by Taylor Nichols, who got French on her back and just sealed her to allow Brooks to get inside and make that easy layup. Very active Ryland Jones gets that basketball. The sophomores had a really active basketball game this evening. Go along with her, her uh, seven points. Ball's tipped loose from her that time, but she's able to go get it. Brooks gets a three. Lindemann. 
Greg Lindemann, who averages 6.4 rebounds a game. Now spin move into the lane, and ball hits out of bounds, and we'll go the other way. There's a bit of sportsmanship. A couple of ladies help each other up off the court. I like the attack from Lindemann right there, but I like the no call even better from the referee. Lindemann creating that contact, didn't really get hit on the arm or on the leg. The ball just kind of ran into the other player, and no call. I like that. Let him play, especially here in tournament time, right? Absolutely. 11 point lead. Now, with these Mustangs trying to cut into this one again, this is Brooks. Richardson tried to go baseline and could not. Jones gets a three look. And the rebound went to Moore, I think. And here comes Lindemann. Mustangs really rushing their shots right now. They don't get a lot of open looks in this game or haven't gotten a lot of open looks. So when they do, it seems like they're forcing it. That's a three. I had to look at the official to see. Marquis gets another one. I've seen her do this a couple times now this year. She gets hot on that line and watch out. She's got three threes in this game to push it to 14. And did Jones hit it out of bounds? Or who hit it? Going to go, going to go against the Mustangs or go to Jefferson. Going back to that last three, we've talked about this a lot, but Liv Lindemann just does such a nice job creating opportunities for her teammates. She gets past her defender. She draws help. The perimeter defenders come in and help and leaves players wide open on the outside. And Lindemann does a great job finding them, and they're doing a nice job knocking them down. Long pass to French. She's got this one. Moore gets a three look. Taylor Nichols goes after that rebound and gets it. We'll go the other way. Just a pair of seniors on the Allen East team, Kennedy Truex, L. Richardson. She's got the bright future. She's going to miss a couple of good players, but bright future for them. Shot in the lane does not go for Brooks. This is Wilsey. She goes into the lane. Moore gets a three look. And I get, oh, I thought I was going to get to touch the basketball. I saw how excited you were. Yeah, I thought I was going to get to touch the ball. First, I'm going to protect my coffee. And they got uh, Lauren French for going through the back of a Mustang trying to secure the rebound. That's Lauren's third foul with 157 to go here in quarter number three. We said this after she picked up her second. She has three. She's a key defender for this Wildcats team. You got to attack her and try to get her four and even five. Get her on the bench and try to open up some space for yourself inside. They didn't really do much after that second foul, but here with three. Jones gets a look at the three-point line. That was down and came back out. The active Liv Lindemann goes and gets the rebound and will draw a foul trying to get out of trap. <laughs> Taylor Nichols gets her first foul. First Mustang foul the second half. Jefferson has only two. For as tough as both defenses have been, to only have three fouls mm. here in the half is, is pretty impressive. A lot pass ahead. I've seen her on that line before. That one doesn't fall for. You almost expect it to go in, don't you? Yeah, at this point, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Brooks rebounds. Taylor Nichols at the top of the circle. Shots blocked by French. They challenged her, but she got blocked. Well, they did, but you still they, they still faded away from the basket, right? You can't worry so much when you're trying to draw a foul on a player. You can't worry so much about making the shot or avoiding the block. You want to get as much contact as you can and try to force the referee to make the call. Marquis looks inside. French and Nichols going at it down inside. Wilkes, there yeah, we got it down inside the front. Ten points, and that's blocked, and... Almost there. I'm getting close, Evan. I the keep, ball is seeking me out now. I keep thinking about the story you told about uh, about sleeping with your basketball I did. When, I did. as a I, kid, and I can just see how I, much I, you I, love I was ready the, to, the feel yeah. of a basketball. I was ready to cradle it. <sighs> Rock it to sleep. My basketball was cleaner than I was because every time I took a shower, it went in basket in the room the shower with me. <laughs> They got washed first, I guarantee you yeah, that. Yeah, I get it. I All get right, it. we're playing last shot. Jefferson up 14. Mustang trying to cut into that. Here's a baseline jumper. That one will fall. Savannah Brooks got that one. She's got nine in the game now. They didn't play last shot, and so we'll go to Jefferson's opportunity to do so.
Lindemann bounces pass into the lane. Good heads up defensive play that time, though, by Ryland Jones. But she throws it away, and Wilson gets a steal and score. Heads up, Hannah Wilson, your first basket of the game. Thanks to good pressure, they're not even going to get a shot off. Really good flurry at the end of the quarter. So after three, Jefferson will take a 14-point lead to the break. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Stop into Stites Grocery on Harding Highway in Lima for your discount groceries, meat packs, beer processing, full-service meats, and deli. Have a large event. Stites also caters. Give us a call at Stites Grocery. 17-9 quarter that time for the uh, Jefferson team. That pulls it out to a 14-point lead. Yeah, and they hit a couple big shots in the middle of that quarter to start to pull away. Saw Allen East settling just a bit. They started to get some looks inside. A nice little floater over the top of French right before the quarter end. But they got a little bit lazy. And Wilty with a nice steal and lay-in to put or push that lead out to 14 right before the buzzer. And it will be Jefferson basketball here as we start the next eight minutes of play. The team shot a free throw, and that's stolen by Jones. Just took it right away from Liv Lindemann. Good quick hands from Jones. She's a great defender on the perimeter. We've seen a couple good steals from her tonight, just being in the right spot at the right time as well. Jefferson's going to need some points here in the quarter. Kennedy Truex tries to get into the lane. The two defenders there. Push shot from the corner is short. And the rebound to Lindemann. Going to walk it up the floor. Well, thanks Spalding or Millwright tonight. They're our premier sponsor for the Allen East Mustangs. We well, better get out and guard Marquis in a hurry. And trying to push their way through a screen that time. It's going to get Ryland Jones. That would be the case. Just her first foul and team's second of the half. And inbounding the basketball will be Jessa Rustifer. I'm sure the Wildcats will be happy with just some extended possessions here. No bad shots, just move the ball around, put it in the hands of your playmaker. Here's Lindemann into the lane. Eight footer for her is a little bit hard. And the rebound comes to Savannah Brooks. And Lindemann will pick up a foul. That will be just her first foul. She went after the ball too aggressively. We said it just a moment ago, but it's been a really clean half in yeah. terms of fouls. Three against Jefferson, two against Allen East. No free throws, or maybe just two free throws in the half. You can correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. No, we don't have any free throws in the half, as a matter right. of fact. Know sometimes you're too nice. <laughs> Spinning into the lane that time is Jones. She gets her own rebound, but she was out of bounds when she did so. Good hustle play. Just couldn't manage to stay in bounds. Talk about tournament basketball. Lots of stuff coming up Saturday and Sunday on WSN. And I can tell you this, Evan, I sent out 17 site requests today for games for next week. So we're going to be very busy with the WSN crew next week. It's the best time of the year. Yeah, it really is. Lindemann has to wrestle the ball away, and her strength keeps the ball in her team's possession. Six minutes to go. Of course, we'll be back here on Saturday afternoon to Take the Ooh. finals of this game. Heads up dribble that time by Hannah Wilson. Here's Lindemann. They're going to play a little keep away right now. Neither team scored here in quarter number four. That's not a very good pass. It's picked off by Kennedy Truex. She bounced passes across the lane, and L. Richardson can't finish. Got the ball just a little too deep inside, and Lindemann then bangs it off the leg of Truex. Really good hustle from Lindemann right there. That's a play that a lot of players might just give up on, but she did a great job just knocking it off Allen East. Those are the plays that win you games, Mark. The, the cross-court path was just a shade late, and she caught it a little bit too deep to be able to finish, and then the hustle play ends up ball being Jefferson's basketball. Two and a half minutes into quarter four without a score. Rostifer goes baseline. Nichols cuts her off, and... He gets the foul. Taylor Nichols? Let's see. It is. 
Taylor Nichols gets her second foul, third team foul, based on the bounds in front of our area. And Jacob O'Neill, our baseline camera guy today. Big yawn from O'Neill underneath. He lives at Elida Fieldhouse this week. Yeah, and and next week, too, uh, with all the games we're doing here. French shots blocked by Nichols. She has defended very well inside. French had eight in the opening quarter, has only two since then. Jones goes all the way to the rim and will draw a foul. It's that simple, Mark. Yeah, Just go in it. there, draw contact. That's four fouls now against French. Now yeah, only 458 is. left, but again, we've seen Alanis, when French has been off the court, they've done such a nice job scoring inside. These will be a pair of free throws They are sponsored tonight by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. That one goes. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. French will take a seat. Look into my score sheet here. That is the, what, uh, eighth point, I guess, for Ryland Jones. Back to the free throw line she will go. The advantage is if they're able to score points with the clock stop here. And that one is a little bit hard. I'm going to check the stat page, see how many rebounds Lindemann has, because if the ball hits the floor, she has it. Yeah, absolutely. She does such a nice job doing all the little things. They've gone five on the perimeter now with French out. Marquis is trying to post up a little bit. She'll slip out to the perimeter here in just a moment. And that will be a foul. That one will be assessed to Audrey Young, her third. And Allen East right now, they need to foul, uh, right? I mean, they're, they're down by 13 points, four and a half to go. That's only their fourth team foul. And we're going to get a timeout that will go to Dolphus Jefferson. 4.35 to go in the basketball game. You're watching high school basketball on WLSN. Our premier sponsor this evening for the Allen East Mustangs is Spallinger of Mill Lake Services. Proud to support Allen East Mustangs. The team at SMS offers quality products from fabrication installation located on Hanthorn Road and online at Spallinger.com. Denise Lindemann takes a timeout. That would be her third timeout of the game. I think she's getting her team just right on the right page here with 4.35 to go in the basketball game. Yeah, Alan East is going to pressure hard on the perimeter, trying to force some steals. And so you need to calm your team down a little bit, give them some advice on, on how to break down some of that pressure. I think it's just going to be a lot of screens back and forth, weaving around the perimeter. If you have a lane, go ahead and take it. There's still four and a half left. But otherwise, don't force anything. Don't do anything silly. And you mentioned a moment ago, Allen East has just four team fouls. They could be super aggressive at least twice and not uh, have to put them on the free throw line, maybe create some, some steal opportunities too. Here's Lindemann. At the very least, start getting into the free throw line so you get the ball back. Sure, five on the perimeter stuff they're running right now. This is Rostifer. A little pass and cut action. Here's Lindemann, tried to get to the rim, could not, pretty well defended that time by Young. Here comes a trap. Now at least doing everything they can to try to get this possession to come to an end. You know, they're tired as well. You can see it, they're trying to chase Jeff Jefferson around the perimeter. They're just getting tired, not able to get their feet set and get a good trap. Jefferson fans starting to understand the situation. They're coming to life over there with how their team's handling the ball. That goes to Young. Aubrey now has her fourth foul. Fifth team foul. Rustifer will inbound. Jessa finds a teammate in the backcourt. That would be Liv Lindemann. This is Tiemann. She's had a really nice basketball game today. Gwen's had seven here in the second half alone. Ball's tipped out of bounds and will stay with Jefferson. I'd anticipate probably a foul on this inbound going for a steal. You got to be aggressive. You got to get in them. Bumped heads at the top there. Teeman's trap. That's the trap and they're looking for. Yep. L. Richardson knocked it out of bounds. Christopher will inbound again. Lindemann tried to go baseline, and she bounced the ball off the leg of Young. She's going to stay on the Jefferson side. Yeah. 
Rostefer. Big scramble on the floor for the ball. Tiemann's on the floor with along with a couple of Mustangs, and the basketball goes to Allen East. Got to score quickly here. Yeah. Just under three and a half to go. Here from the Elida Fieldhouse, the Union Bank Court. This will be a three-point. This will be a big basket if it goes, and it does. Big three-point basket that time by Riley Jones. That gives her 11 in the game, and we get a timeout. I think her coach called that timeout, correct? Yeah, Aaron Montgomery took that timeout really quickly as soon as that ball went in. Wants to slow his team down. Only down 10 now. Now the length of the floor to go for Delphus Jefferson. Still one foul to give. So like you said, on these inbounds, they can be very aggressive going for steals, trying to create some contact and see what they can do. I like what they did down here in pressuring and somehow able to not foul and get the jump ball. Now the arrow favoring Jefferson. Two timeouts left for each team. Do you enjoy games like this one? Are you thankful for the chance to showcase our local high school teams on TV? Please consider making a donation to TV44 so we can keep airing games just like this one. Donate online right now at WTOW.com or send a gift by phone by calling 419-339-4444. And we thank you for doing so. That timeout was called by Allen East. They still have two remaining in the basketball game. And they trail by 10. Quick and steal here yeah. to go a long way for the Mustangs. The lob pass goes to Lindemann. And she takes the ball to 17 feet and goes right up and scores from about 14 feet. She only has eight points in the basketball game tonight. Her contributions have come in other areas tonight. There's a move inside, and it goes up a little bit hard on the attempt by Savannah Brooks. Let's see if she gets to go to the free throw line. Marquis gets her foul, and we'll get a couple of Lee's famous recipe free throw opportunities here for Brooks. Her team is just one for four from the free throw line this evening. Hasn't been many fouls, and she rolls that one in for point number 10 for her. Comes French back into basketball game. She's had a nice long break as well. She should be able to contribute quite a bit for Jefferson here in the last three minutes. Well, she had four fouls, and her coach said, we're going to play five on the perimeter. Let's see how they play now with her back in the game. She immediately snags a rebound. A rare miss right there as well. Brooks, a 80% free throw shooter. Skip pass, Tiemann. And we're going to get a foul as Richardson tried to shove her way through Rostefer's screen. Her first foul. That will be the team's sixth. It's the second time we've seen that from Alan East so far tonight, going right through a screen. Sometimes you get blindsided and you don't know it's there. Sometimes the fatigue factor gets in and you just kind of push your way through a screen. Here's the inbounding by Moore, and she will lob it into French. Triple teamed inside, throws it back out top. Trap out front, Moore's trap. She gets it to Wiltsy. Coach Lindemann was ready to take one yeah. of those two timeouts as well. Each team has two timeouts remaining. And they're going to spread the floor. This is Tiemann. And Lindemann, and bounce pass through the lane, and she finds Wiltsy for the basket. We talked about Lindemann's <laughs> contributions coming, not necessarily in the scoring column right there, just a great job, leadership play right there, getting through the defense, finding Wiltsy wide open underneath. Jones tries to work the lane and cannot. So she kicks it back out top to Brooks. And her shot will go up and miss. French gets another rebound since she came back in the game. Under two Ooh. minutes to go. Now these people wanted to shove off. They didn't get the call. And back to the perimeter offense they go. I've been really impressed in the last three minutes how Jefferson has handled this pressure, moving the ball around the perimeter, doing a nice job taking care of the basketball, and now earning one and one at the line. Uh, Young will foul out of the basketball game with that particular foul. She will finish the contest with eight points. She is just a junior, will be returning next year into the free throw line to shoot a Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw will be Liv Lindemann. 
Oops. Kat got her two, uh, two, for, two for three tonight. Makes that one. Point nine for her. Pushes the lead to 14. We talked about the rebounds. Likely 10 rebounds for her. That would be 10 points if it rolls in. To multiple bounces that won't fall and gets her some rebounds, but go the other way. Jones runs into French, has to kick it back out to Brooks. And working inside is Truex. Here comes the other way up. Oh, Lindemann says, nope, we're going to run some more clock off. French there again. Usually she goes that way with her foot on the gas pedal. That will be a foul out front that will go to Dylan Miller. Back to the free throw line will go Lindemann. Another one and one Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. Now the seniors. Yep. Headed Kennedy, off. Kennedy Truex just left the floor. Got a big hug from her coach. Just, uh, two seniors free throw does it go. That rebound was secured by the other senior, Richardson. <laughs> Even though the Mustangs want to go quickly, just such great defense from the Jeff Cats. Up 11 and still playing tough on the perimeter. No good looks for Allen East. I think French blocked that shot, but she might have fouled out in the process. Somebody got a foul call anyway. Let's see. It is. That was on Lauren French, correct? It, it was. was. She will foul out with 10 points, but Emma, she got her team off to a great start tonight because she had eight in the opening half, yeah. opening quarter. Absolutely did a nice job defensively, getting a couple blocks, altering a lot of shots. A double-double for French tonight. And standing ovation from the crowd on her way out. Well, and here's the other senior who is leaving the floor for Alan East, Elle Richardson. She will finish her senior year. That free throw, a Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw, doesn't fall for Dylan Miller. Second opportunity here for her. It's the hardest part about tournament time. You know, it's, it's a brutal thing. And I get it. All I love basketball. I, I do. And it's tough. It, it's, it's part of what makes the game so good this time of year because you lay everything on the line. And, and obviously, one team comes up short every night. But that, that, that competitiveness that you got to win this one makes that ball gets tipped out of bounds or kicked out of bounds. Not many turnovers tonight uh, for the white team. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, not many for either team. For either team. Number 32 checked in. That's Ella Miller. We've been a couple more subs in. This will be uh, Macuse back in the game as well, and Wilkie will get his break. Did we get uh, another new player into the game? Looks like number three is in the game. That's Riley Jordan. She's a freshman for Allen East. Try to get everybody's name here. This is Jordan right here with the basketball. And she lost it under pressure, or was it tipped out of bounds? Went out of bounds off of. Lindemann puts a couple more players in the game. Looks like uh, Skyler Benson will enter. Also does uh, Avery Kesson. Number 25 will enter for Jefferson. Let's see, number 25 on my roster. There's not a 25 on my I roster. Don't have oh, that one I don't either. have a 25 on my roster, do you? No, I do not. That I will apologize for. We have the uh, Turner roster here in front of us this evening. And there is not a 25 listed, so our mistake uh, not checking that out prior to the basketball game. Ball's tipped loose. Eventually ends up in the hands of Gwen Tiemann, and this one's going to come to an end. And Jefferson will take a 49. It's a 36 victory tonight over the Allen East Mustangs. Boy, Evan, not many points in the fourth quarter, just five for Jefferson. They played a lot of keep away and only six for Allen East in the final quarter. Yeah, you're right. They did spend a ton of time with the basketball, but also played some really, really tough defense down the stretch. 
a really good game on both ends of the basketball for, or both ends of the court, excuse me, for Delphus Jefferson. And they should be proud of the effort, but Alan East, they stuck in there. This is a tough team they're playing against, a team that they only lost to by three points earlier in the year. And this one, they just, it just kind of got away from them in the second half. It did. Let's take a, a quick look at the quarter scores. Alan East quarter scores were 14, 7, 9, and 6. Gives them their 36 points on this season. Jefferson quarter scores 21, 6, 17, and 5. I, I, we just got a stat sheet handed to us from, uh, from the good people here at the Elida. Just four Mustangs scored this evening. Kennedy Truex had six, 10 for Savannah Brooks, 11 for Ryland Jones, and uh, eight for Aubrey Young. Look on the other side, three players in double figures, 11 for Ryland Marquis, uh, 10 for Lauren French, 10 for Gwen Tiemann. Looks like we had, uh, what, eight for Liv Lindemann. So pretty balanced scoring for them. What other numbers jump off the page at you, Evan? Well, you talked about Lindemann's rebounding. She had 11 rebounds to go along with those nine points, also four assists on the night. So a great job from her. 13 points, 10 rebounds, or 10 rebounds, 15 points, excuse me, for Lauren French. And, and let me correct myself one more time. 10 points, 15 rebounds. Either way, a really great night for Lauren yeah. French. And you look down the, the line, just a lot of really good play from this Delphus Jefferson team. Hannah Wiltsey ended the night with four assists along with Liv Lindemann's four and uh, just a really good effort. On the other side, you read through the points. Alan East got nine rebounds from L. Richardson who couldn't find the scoreboard, which again, really nice job from that Jefferson defense keeping L away from the rim. But ultimately, again, great team win for Delphus Jefferson who did a lot of really good things, not just in the scoring column, but all around good basketball. Just a really a quick thought, too, because you talked about the 10 points and 15 boards for Lauren Prince. Because of foul trouble, she only played 25 minutes tonight. And uh, that's obviously to accomplish those types of things in that short of time span. Congratulations for her to doing that. And congratulations to Delphus Jefferson. They'll move on to 23 and 1. We're we'll back here on Saturday at 2 o'clock to play the winner of our upcoming game between Fairview and Ottawa Glandorf. And uh, we want to thank and congratulate also the Alice Mustangs. Their season will end at 17 and 7 on their particular conference year, Labor 4 and 4. We want to thank our sponsors tonight. Our scoreboard was sponsored by Stites Grocery, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, sponsored our free throws. And our premier sponsor tonight for the Alan East Mustangs was Spalling and Millwright. We want to thank uh, Kelsey Driscoll. We want to thank uh, Jacob O'Neill for putting this together for you. And your viewing pleasure this evening. Second game coming up right after this. But Jefferson moves on 49-36 over Alan East. You've been watching high school basketball at WOSN.